Hello everyone, welcome to Physics Pathfinder. You are watching part two of series and parallel and potential divider circuits. Today's session will be concentrating on solving IB past paper questions on this topic. So let's start. Before that, let me remind you to like and subscribe my channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates. So let's start with the paper one. If you can just look at this question, what I would recommend is pause the video, try to solve and come back for solution. So if you have understood the graph, the graph is a I versus V graph. And what you can see here is a parallel circuit where S and T are in parallel. So what we know in parallel is S and T in parallel will have the same voltage, if you remember from the previous session. So look in the figure where both the resistors will have the same voltage that is showing the same voltage as you can see here that is marked. And for the same voltage, the current is each of the resistor will have a, or each of a conductor will have the current of three amperes. So three plus three, the total current in the ammeter shows six, which is correct. And for that six amperes current, the EMF of the cell should nothing be but four volts. So the answer is A. Let's go for part next part of the question. Pause the video, try to solve and come back for solution. So if you can see this, what I would recommend is divide your question into two parts, part for X and part for Y. Note down the length diameter and resistivity for each of them. Something like a tabulation that you can see here. So if you can note here that for X, the length is L, diameter is D. If diameter is D, radius is half of diameter. So radius is D over 2 and resistivity is rho as given in the question. But for Y, the length is double the diameter is half and resistivity is also half. So accordingly, if you can just note down, you will see that length is 2L, diameter is D over 2. If diameter is D over 2, then radius is upon 2 again, which is D over 4 and resistivity is rho by 2. Now we know the equation R is equal to rho L by A. So look at this. I have just substituted things for X. R of X is rho for X, L for X, and area is for a wire is the cross-sectional area, which is a circle. So area is pi R square. So R is nothing but this. So you're going to square this whole thing, which is D square over four. So this is the equation for resistance for X. Same way, you have to get the equation for resistance of Y which is rho by 2 times 2L over pi into D by 4, the whole square, which is D square by 16. Now, they want the resistance of X over resistance of Y. So, R of X by R of Y, on proper calculation, you get it is 1 fourth. So, the answer is D, which is 0.25. Next, look at this diagram. You have to find the effective resistance between the points P and Q. So P and Q are the reference points. Every resistor is four ohms. Now comes the hint. If you have two four ohms in parallel, then the hint is two resistors, which are four ohms each. Their effective resistance is two ohms. I to redraw the whole thing. P and Q is the reference point. Each resistor is 4. So this is 4. The side one is 4. And the one which we just have solved is 2. Now P and Q is a reference point. So for P and Q, 4 and 6 are in series. So if you can see here, 4 plus 2 is 6. So now we can see and redraw the final figure, which is... 4, which is the upper resistor, and the lower resistor is 6. 
these two are in parallel with reference to P and Q. So when you solve in such a way, the answer is 2.4. So the effective resistance with respect to points P and Q is 2.4, which is B. Have a look at this diagram. The graph shows a current versus voltage. The question is, outline why the component X is non-omic. Very clearly, ohmic resistor is the one where V is directly proportional to I or I is directly proportional to V. So it has to be a straight line passing through origin. So very clearly, we can tell it's not a directly proportional graph as the slope or gradient or resistance is not a constant. Look at the next part of the question. There is a component X with a negligible resistance that is placed in series with another variable resistor R. The ammeter reads 20 milliampers. Determine the resistance of the variable resistor. So we have to find the resistance of the variable resistor. So what we know is the total voltage and what we know is the total current. So if V is equal to I into R, can we get the total resistance? So step one is to find the total resistance. Let's see the solution. So here, if you can see here, the total resistance as per the, we'll go with the second method of calculation. If you know the voltage and current, we get the total resistance. The next step is to find the voltage across X. Look at the diagram. For 20 milliampers, we have a graph already for X. For 20 milliampers, the voltage across X is 2.3 volts, which you get from the graph. So if voltage is 2.3 volts, you can find the resistance, which is 150. So if total resistance, you know, you know the voltage across X, subtracting that, you get the voltage of the variable resistor, which is 85 ohms. Next is the concept of power. Now the power is nothing but voltage times current. So if you can see voltage is 4 volts and current is 20 milliampers, so we can find the power. Next part of the question, you can see here. Now the, there is a different arrangement. You have put X as a potential divider with the 4 volt supply. The question is, state the range of the current that the ammeter can show when the slider is moving from point Q to point P. Point Q to point P. At Q, the resistance is zero, as you can see, and at P, the resistance is maximum. You're controlling the voltage. P is directly proportional to R. When P is directly proportional to R, the current is going to be dependent on the voltage drop. So if you can see here, if you can see at when the resistance is zero, when the resistance is zero, voltage is directly proportional to resistance. So current is zero. When resistance was maximum, voltage was maximum and the maximum voltage in the diagram is four volts. So for four volts, the current is maximum, which is this, you can see here. So there is a maximum voltage drop. So at the maximum resistance, the voltage drop is output voltage will be four volts. And at four volts, the current is 60 milliampers. So what you can write, the answer is the range of current will be from zero to 60 milliampers. Next is the question, describe with reference to your answer the advantage of potential divider arrangement as against the previous. Why do you think? In the previous, the current that we got was only till 20 milliampers. But now in the new arrangement, I am getting current around 60 milliampers. So that is a big advantage. So we can write that since the overall resistance reduces and the current increases or the power in the circuit increases, we can tell that the second method has a higher advantage as compared to the first. Next, let's see this question, which is again paper one. You can see there is a six volt supply with internal resistance which is negligible. 
4 and 4 are in parallel. So now we know when two resistors are equal, the resultant resistance is 2. The resistance of ammeter is 1. Don't forget to see this. So 2 and 1 are in series. So which is total is 3. 6 volt is the power supply. So the current is 2 amperes. A. Next. Next is a theory paper. Again, it's a current versus voltage. The question is state how the resistance of T varies with the current going through T. If you can see here, I versus V is inverse of resistance because the resistor is V upon I. So if we take a ratio I upon V, inverse of the slope is the answer for resistance. So whatever is the slope, inverse of that is the answer. State how the resistance of T varies with the current along the circuit through T. So as you can see here, since the gradient of T increases, means actually the answer for resistance is inverse of the gradient, means it is reducing. So you can tell for T, as the current increases, resistance is decreasing. Or you can use the argument I over V is inverse of resistance. So inverse of the slope is the actual resistance. Deduce without the numerical calculation whether R or T has a greater value of resistance at 0.4 amperes. So at 0.4 amperes, which is this part of the circuit at 0.4 amperes, you have to look at the gradient. At 0.4 amperes, the gradient of R is smaller than T, which means resistance of R is greater than resistance of T. Either you can use the argument that we have spoken about, or you can see the 4, 4 amperes 0.4 amperes, the voltage of R and voltage of T is 5.6 and 5.3. And V is directly proportional to R. So if our V of R is 5.6 of R is greater than R of T, either you use that argument or you can use the concept based on the gray, inverse of gradient. The last part of the today's theory, you can see it's again a potential divider, a slider Z of the potentiometer is moved from Y, which is the zero point of resistance, to X, which is the maximum point of the resistance. R and T are in parallel, so it should have the same voltage. State what happens to the magnitude of current in the ammeter. So when you are Going from Y to X, that is from minimum resistance to maximum resistance, what can you tell? It's inversely proportional. And if resistance increases, current decreases. Last part, estimate the explanation. The voltmeter reading when the ammeter is 0.2 amperes. So when the ammeter is reading a total current of 0.2 amperes, that 0.2 should split into certain two values. So this is the hint that point two should be having a split in R and T and the voltage should be a constant because they are in parallel. So let's go back to the graph. If you can look at the graph, total current is point two. So let's mark it point two. What should be the voltage? Look for the option. If the voltage is 1 volt, are the currents at those points adding up to 0 0.2? Is it possible to have a current which is around less than 0 0.1 and this is approximately almost near 0? Can you add them to get 0 0.2? The next option is go for this. See your current of 0 0.2 and the voltage is also same 2 volts. So the answer is 2 volt is the answer for a total current of 2 amperes. You can see here 0 0.14 amperes and 0 
if that is the amperes that adds up to the required current and the voltage for them is 2 volts. Hope you have understood today's session. Do like and subscribe my channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates. Bye-bye.